morning. Welcome back again to our breakfast show. And we start off with the first topic. And we're going to be talking about the sharks incident in uh, the Red Sea resort of Sharm el Sheikh. Now, Egypt is on track to meet its tourism growth targets despite of a scare following a rare series of shark attacks. Now, half of the beaches at the popular sites uh, in Sharm el Sheikh are now open again after the shark attacks had caused um, alarm. Now, joining us in the studio to share more shed more on that topic that topic is Dr. Amr Abul Fat, a diving expert and he's also a former president of Sinai Diving Association. Good morning, Doctor. Good morning. Well, uh, Dr. Abul Fat, although the Red Sea has seen some shark attacks before, it's not the first one, but these are quite alarming, these new ones. And the government is trying and the, gang and the researchers are trying to capture the sharks, but so far they haven't done that. I think, are, think are the reasons behind these recent attacks? There are, there are plenty of reasons that might have contributed to the... But, uh, but uh, my little boy of six have asked me question that, is, that is very, very important. And it really opened my eyes. Because when he heard about the accident, he said, why? Who upset them? So the fact is, we upset the shark. There are lots of reason, reasons. It, overfishing can be one of them. The, uh, uh, up, unusual uh, water temper temperature, the rise of water temperature at this time of the year, be one of, be one of them. The dumping of uh, dead animals that happened accident of the boats passing by. Mm -hmm. There are that need that needs extensive scientific research, but the solution is by uh, attacking and killing the area. About many reasons that could have caused this or evil behavior of the resort, knowing that, of course, or noting that to be a shark site, although the incidents. Uh, uh, oh, you spoke about one of the reasons with the cargo being uh, sheep. Now, how, in terms of affecting the behavior of sharks in that area? Uh, sharks are normally categorized in different, different categories. In one of them, it's, it's uh, uh, scavengers. scavengers they basically eat dying or dead fish. fish. Mm -hmm. When you put this element in the water, they naturally come to the surface and eat it. Uh, there is a theory uh, talking about the fact that they might have gotten used to eating uh, things from the surface, and this is where the swimmers are, as uh, we have never ever heard of a shark attack happening on a diver. So simply this uh, reason or this theory needs extensive studies. Mm -hmm. Well, you also talked about overfishing in the Red Sea area. Uh, does overfishing draw the sharks closer to the shore? And uh, I, I know that there are some laws uh, that, that are against uh, fishing in specific areas. Th there is a law, in fact, mm -hmm. uh, against uh, fishing or trading sharks in the Red Sea of mm -hmm. 2006. And we don't understand how we are going to revenge attacking the sharks and actually catching all of them uh, but overfishing is specifically it is causing a resource depletion for their natural food mm -hmm. now doctor many uh, um, analysts and even people are wondering if what took place was an incident by one type of shark or was there different types of species or different type of sharks involved in these attacks there are many speculations about this uh, the fact that all the scientists need to get together they need mm -hmm. to study this and these studies take very long time uh, we are heading towards uh, ecotourism we cannot really uh, head towards ecotourism when we lack of uh, of uh, environmental credentials mm -hmm. when we start to attack these sharks are, or thinking that the fact that we are going to remove all these sharks from the sea in order to promote tourism mm -hmm. on the contrary it will have a very negative effect on the tourism economy and we will lose tourists coming for the environment which is a growing trend around the world. Mm. Experts have now advised uh, spe uh, specific procedures should be taken like patrol boats for example or banning the feeding of, uh, of fish or sharks in the area things like that but are these measures enough for the swimmers and divers to feel safe? There are plenty of measures that is uh, good for recovering from this incident uh, capturing all uh, 
the violators in terms of the ones who are doing overfishing inside the national park. This is a national park. You're not allowed to fish anywhere. Mm -hmm. But the reality is it happens. This should stop immediately. A uh, fish feeding, uh, it should stop immediately, even if it's by tourists who are having fun taking something from the open buffet, going in the morning to feed the fish in order to attract them. This is very dangerous. Uh, by uh, allowing all the boats to treat their waste in a more eco-friendly way by taking their waste back to the shore after they finish their daily trip. Uh, there are plenty of measures that needs to be taken and for sure there has to be a ban on trying and catching uh, the sharks because it worsens the problem. There is mm -hmm. a growing trend and there are petitions and there are lots of uh, associations calling around the world for Egypt to stop the catching of the sharks. Yes, and of course, um, doctor, uh, the safety of divers also is very important. And because uh, Sharm el-Sheikh is a very popular spot uh, around the world that attracts people to come, particular or tourists particularly to come for diving, what are the safety measures that divers now should take in order to protect themselves against any uh, uh, other shark attacks? Let me assure you and correct a piece of information: sharks never attack divers. There has not been one recorded accident for divers. Sharks attack people on the surface, on water surface, so snorkelers or swimmers. Uh, and the measures that need to be taken are by those who are on the surface. Mm -hmm. Basically to swim, not in a jerky way, they swim gracefully. The use of the mask and snorkeling fins uh, because of the depth and they stay on the surface in groups, never to take food with them and they stay nearby shores. There is enough to see nearby shores. It is not like going very far deep in the, uh, out away from the shore to, in order to see something. Mm -hmm. On the contrary, mm -hmm. everything is close by. Mm -hmm. Welcome back again to The Breakfast Show. You're still joining us and of course we're talking about the latest incidents that uh, took place in Sharm el-Sheikh with sharks and the environmental behaviours. Of course, um, Dr. Amr, um, how far do you think such incidents will affect uh, tourism in Egypt, particularly after the shark incident? Because usually people, are, you know, when they hear of sharks, they get frustrated, they freak out, so they want to be on the safe side, probably stay at the shore until uh, this is sorted out. The major, the major problem was the shark incident come out of the movie Joe's written by Peter Benchley, mm -hmm. who basically declared that he wrote this on a fiction base and when he realized the damage he's done to the environment, he became uh, one of the major players in trying to protect the shark from being in, in, in extinct. And the fact that he actually died in 2006 in the same year here when in Egypt we dictated a law banning um, shark uh, catching or trading in the entire Red Sea. But the fact that um, if you look at the statistics of shark attacks worldwide, there has not been recorded in the, mo the most recorded accidents in one year was 79 accidents with 11 fatalities. Mm -hmm. If you look at, on the other hand, on uh, recorded accidents of uh, snake bites, for example, it's more than 30,000 annually. Uh, we are talking about a very small marginal problem that was created based on fiction movies mm. in, uh, in the cinema by Hollywood. But what is uh, upsetting these sharks? You said you mentioned that these sharks must be upset. We're doing something to their environment that's making them attack us. Those nice creatures normally have a role in life. Their job is to clean our oceans from the dead or the dying fish. When we catch most of the fish, then we are removing big part of their own uh, um, uh, fish element or f feeding elements. And this is basically why they could be, uh, one of the reasons why they could be upset. Mm. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, um, Dr. Amr Abul Fath, diving expert and also former president of Sinai Diving Association. Thank you very much for joining us at the breakfast show. And now we have a report, and it takes us all the way to Alexandria. And uh, Qait Bay Sedatel in Alexandria is considered one of the most important defensive strongholds, not only in Egypt but also among the Mediterranean Sea coast. Let's take a look at this report. <laughs> 